you're like, what is that thing? Uh, so if you've been noticing some silky webs popping up on your trees, and if it's springtime and those trees are cherries or plums or apples, you are likely seeing the work of the Eastern Tent Caterpillar. So in this edition of What's Bugging My Tree, we'll talk a little bit about what Eastern Tent Caterpillar is, what it looks like, and some potential lookalikes, and also what it means for your tree. So what is Eastern Tent Caterpillar? It's a native insect that's widespread in Eastern North America, so all over, and it impacts trees cherries, plums, apples, and other related species. Um, that caterpillar will eventually grow into a moth, but it's the caterpillar stage that most people notice because that's what's eating leaves and creating those really distinctive little tents, thus the name Eastern Tent Caterpillar. So the females lay eggs in masses around twigs of trees and that rose family, in the summertime, these sit waiting until the following spring when they hatch. And then, of course, they form these distinctive silky tents. Those tents protect the caterpillars, um, both from anything that's trying to eat them, but also creating the right conditions for them. These eastern tent caterpillars come out um, one of the first things to emerge in the spring, right when those leaves start uh, coming out, leafing out. And so, you know, it's pretty cold then. Those tents create the right moisture conditions, the right warmth needed for those caterpillars to develop. Um, so these are social caterpillars. Uh, we don't normally think of caterpillars that way, but they like sticking together and they will feed in mass. Um, they will stay in their large groups and they leave the tent several times a day to feed and then eventually coming back to that tent for protection. Eventually, those caterpillars will form cocoons that will then develop into adult moths and the cycle continues. Um, the caterpillars eat the leaves of trees, and in some cases, they can completely defoliate those trees. While this looks bad, trees are typically fine and will set out a new flush of leaves and will recover without problems. Um, this might be a minor stress to trees, and I know that some people think it looks really unsightly, not just the loss of the leaves, but those tints in the trees, but it's really not a major health concern for those trees. Um, Outbreak years might happen occasionally, but it's unlikely that the same tree is going to be impacted year after year after year and that this is going to be a serious issue. On the other hand, in addition to their impact to trees, another thing that makes Eastern Tent Caterpillar uh, notable is their impact to animals. So they are considered potentially uh, damaging to horses and have been linked to mere reproductive loss syndrome in horses. Um, and, you know, some of this is still up in the air and less conclusive, but there have been some studies done that have shown that when pregnant mares feed on eastern tent caterpillars, um, they might have a higher risk of failure. And because of this, extra caution should be taken in areas where pregnant mares are located and the host species for eastern tent caterpillar, things like cherry, might be undesirable in places where you have pregnant female horses. So um, that's something to consider. And I know it's made the news in the past um, when there have been major mare reproductive loss uh, syndrome events. So uh, maybe not a big problem for your trees, but something to consider uh, if you have horses. So a little bit more on the identification of Eastern Tent Caterpillar. Again, it's one of the earliest emerging caterpillars in the spring. And these caterpillars are going to grow as they age. They go through different stages. And in all of those, they're going to be covered by these hairs, which can defend it somewhat against things that want to eat it. Um, it's also worth noting that those young caterpillars are gonna look a little bit different from those older caterpillars. So those young caterpillars here, you can see some here on this tent. They have these two thin little yellow stripes along their back. Meanwhile, the kind of older caterpillars are gonna be much longer and have one stripe 
that runs down the back, as well as some other colors on the side, blue and yellow and black as well. Um, so the tents that Eastern tent caterpillars make are typically located where the branches and the trunk meet, or either way, a little bit closer into the tree. They like to hang out together and feed together during the day um, and hide out in that tent when they aren't feeding. You can see in this case, you've got some of those younger caterpillars. Those egg masses of the eastern tent caterpillar are smooth and shiny and wrapped around a twig. And again, these will all eventually develop into adults that are kind of furry and nondescript and brown, uh, tan, light brown color with these uh, white stripes on their wings. Now, I say all of this, and I think it's also important to note that there are a lot of potential lookalikes. Um, we have a lot of other caterpillars that either are already in the area or could be in the area in the future that can kind of look like the eastern tent caterpillar. Um, here you can see a picture of the eastern tent caterpillar and a few others. So I just wanted to walk through some of those differences. Um, eastern tent caterpillar, again, has this one line down the back, yellow or kind of a white color. Um, and then others that you might see would be something like a forest tent caterpillar, which is another native caterpillar, but it's got more of these keyhole shaped uh, dots on the back. This is fall webworm, another caterpillar. It's really, really hairy though, <laughs> and doesn't have quite that same coloration. And this one right here is the spongy moth. While the eastern tent caterpillar, forest tent caterpillar, and fall webworm are native, insects. This is an invasive insect that we don't want to see in our area. Um, so you, if you live in Kentucky, hopefully you don't see any of these, but in other parts of the country, uh, spongy moth is established and can cause major defoliation events. And you can see here it's got uh, different colored dots on the back, blue and red. So each of those caterpillars looks slightly different. And then another way to tell them apart would be, you know, how are they living? Eastern temp caterpillar has those really obvious um, silky webby tints right at the point where the branches meet the trunk typically, although sometimes those might be a little bit further out. But if you're thinking of something like fall webworm, not only might you see that a little bit later in the season, but they're gonna have looser tints that are gonna kind of be in a little uh, kind of further out on the branches, not as close. Um, and then another thing to consider is what is it feeding on? So Eastern tent caterpillar really likes those trees in the rose family, your black cherry, your plum, apple, crab apple, and others. Um, whereas some other species might have different preferences. Um, and their egg masses will also differ. But something I think worth noting is that of these, um, only that invasive spongy moth that I mentioned is going to be considered a major forest health issue to trees. Um, sometimes you can get outbreaks of some of them that locally can cause more damage, but less of a major concern. And so when it comes to management, if the trees are healthy, typically no management is needed. Uh, they might look bad. <laughs> they might be totally defoliated by Eastern tent caterpillar, but they will probably bounce back just fine. Now, if you can reach those tents, a really easy way to manage them would just be to destroy them. So reach those tents and pull them out of there. That's easy enough, right? Now, sometimes it's not so easy if they're high up in a tree. Um, but on those smaller trees, not only could those be physically removed, the tents, I would do this when um, those have just started forming and those caterpillars are really small. Um, you could also prune out or remove the egg masses that are on those twigs before they hatch. Uh, there are also both chemical uh, control options with insecticides, as well as biological control options with BT. Um, those are going to be most effective when the caterpillars are very small, so they just hatched. As soon as you see them hatching and the tents forming, that's the time to apply. Um, but for the most part, those aren't 
going to be uh, necessary in terms of the tree health. Um, and under no circumstances should tents be set on fire. I'm not sure where this idea came from. Um, and while it might kill the caterpillars, the potential risk to your tree far exceeds the risk of the actual tent caterpillar. Uh, so not a good idea, especially when these caterpillars pose no real risk to your tree. So thank you for joining me today and learning a little bit more about Eastern Tent Caterpillar. If you have any questions, we will take those now.